Hello all. Hope you are doing well. <laughs> well, over this online, we are going to keep our learning uninterrupted. We have covered uh, so many lectures as well as practicals before the lockdown. Hope you are revising it. I'm very happy to see your online engagements regarding academic activities. We have been sending you files over um, Google email through Google Forms. We are trying various formats. And this Zoom is one of the format. Before having any uh, Zoom meeting scheduled, what we are trying to do is uh, we are going to record Zoom video and then we'll be posting this video in YouTube. I ask you to see this video and then if you have any queries, we have a comment section over there itself. You can comment. And you can also WhatsApp me or email me whatever queries you have regarding this class or the classes which you have taken before lockdown. So every day we are going to see a new lecture and we will be also revising it. Hope you'll be doing it. And most importantly, I have shared with you a master sheet. Now, uh, that master sheet, it consists of all the basic graphical diagrams, graphical representations of all the concepts that we have covered. Especially, we know in uh, production economics course, we have got three types of relationships which are major, you know, like factor product, factor factor, and product product. In that um, educational chart, master educational chart, we have given in detail all the basic concepts. Once you understand what the graph or what the diagram is about, it is easy for you to understand the concept. Leaving everything aside, let us now jump into this class, balance sheet analysis. Okay. In theory class, we have covered it, but this is about the practical point of view. So what is balance sheet? What is the other name for it, which you know very well, right? Net worth statement. A balance sheet is also called as net worth statement. And what is the use of a balance sheet? The use is to understand form solvency, solvency position of a farmer. You know, we saw in the theory class that in agriculture, we have got three major statements. You see, we have got three major statements. Here you go. Ah. So we have got three key financial statements. You know, first is balance sheet or net worth statement. Then we have cash flow statement. And then we have income or profit loss statement. All these three statements are different from each other. So we have seen all these things in theory classes and we'll be revising it very soon. But right now we understand what is balance sheet. It is also called as net worth statement. Balance, what is remaining. You know, when I say balance sheet, immediately what you know pops in your mind? Assets, liabilities. So net worth is nothing but assets minus liabilities. So what is the use of balance sheet? The use is to understand the form solvency. What is the solvency position of a farmer? You know, that is, whether the farmer is in a position to repay long-term loan or not. You know? So we have assets, liabilities, whether the farmer is able to repay the liability or not. That is what is called as balance sheet uh, use, ultimate use. Okay. So what is the balance sheet? It is a statement. That is one of the financial statements which shows what a farmer owns. That is assets and what the farmer owes to others. So OWNS owns assets, OWES owes liability. What a farmer owns and what he owes to others. And what investment the farmer has done in a business, that is owner's claim, that is the net worth. Net worth means assets minus liability, that is the investment that the farmer has made in his business called farming. So we have assets and we have liabilities. If you are showing in the form of a tabular statement, the assets and liabilities, and the net worth of a particular farmer in a particular time period that is called as balance sheet because balance sheet will, put, will prepare every year. So in a particular time period. So it reveals financial solvency. Again, we know what is solvency, right? Solvency is the ability of the farmer, the capacity of the farmer to repay long-term loan. Now what are assets? What, how, how we can define assets? You see, possessions or items that are owned and capable of giving returns. Those items which have ownership are called assets. Not only ownership, 
they should be in a position to give us something called economic returns. For example, let us take, take the case of a dairy cow. If a farmer is maintaining a dairy cow only for the purpose of milk, right? He is owning it, right? So it's an asset. But after some point of time, the dairy cow, which is especially rare only for milking purpose, if that is not able to give milk, then the same asset becomes a liability. So assets are those which are owned, that have the characteristic of ownership, and then are capable of giving economic returns. Then what is liability? Something which you owe, O-W-E, owe to creditors. For example, a farmer is borrowing a loan of 10 lakh rupees uh, to purchase a tractor. So a tractor, the farmer has got only the right to use, not the right to own. Why? Because he has purchased that tractor with a loan of 15 lakh unless or until the loan is repaid the farmer is not in a position to enjoy the ownership of the tractor right so we can say dues loans borrowing for business all are under liabilities then owner's claim which is also known as owner's equity or net worth is nothing but assets minus liabilities so right now in this uh, lecture so far what we have seen we have seen what do we mean by balance sheet and what is asset and what is liability and what is net worth all the three are the components of a balance sheet okay we also know the use of a balance sheet apart from balance sheet we also know we have cash flow statement we have a profit loss statement or income statement each three of these statements are unique for example income statement is for form profitability cash flow statement is to understand form liquidity and balance sheet is to understand farm solvency. You know what is farm solvency, right? The ability or capacity of a farmer to repay long-term loan is called as solvency. You can write down the ability or capacity of the farmer to meet up or to repay long-term loan is called farm solvency. Basically, if the farmer is in a position to repay long-term loan, it means automatically he is in a position to repay intermediate as well as short-term loan. Then liquidity what is liquidity the property of asset to get converted into cash for example gold if you're able to convert gold immediately into cash it means what gold has got high degree of liquidity now you take the case of land you know in agricultural land it is not possible for us to convert that agricultural land immediately for that we need so many government approvals we need to show that the land is not under cultivation for considerable time period. So there are some items or assets which can be converted into cash immediately, readily. So it means what? Those assets are highly, they have high degree of liquidity. And those assets like land or like cattle share, like farm building, where it is not possible for us to convert them into cash readily or immediately, all are called long-term assets, right? And then we have form profitability. You see, we need income statement for the purpose to understand form profitability, right? We know in cash flow statement, the cash flow, that is cash inflow and outflow can come from anywhere. A farmer, if he has a son or daughter, if they're working in some city or in some country, if they are sending money, to the farmer that is cash inflow that can be accounted in cash flow statement but here in income statement or profit loss statement here all the particulars all the dealings are with farm and farming alone okay the entries that are made in the statement income or profit loss statement they should refer to farming alone and not any other outside source right now so in a balance sheet, what we have, this is a kind of a statement, this statement, which you are able to see. See, we have assets, we have liabilities. On the left-hand side, we have assets. On the right-hand side, we have liabilities. You know? Again, we see the classification. We have current assets. We have intermediate assets. We have long-term assets, which are also called as fixed assets. And then in liabilities, we have current liabilities. We have intermediate liabilities and we have long-term liabilities. You know very well what is the basis of classification of assets into three. The basis is liquidity. You know, how much readily the items 
can get converted into cash right so the current assets have high degree of liquidity it is very easy to convert the current assets into cash immediately intermediate assets with some delay with some time effort we will be able to convert intermediate assets into cash long term assets it, it takes long time longer duration or it is impossible in many cases for us to convert long term assets into cash right now we have examples you see cash in hand cash in hand is already liquid you know it is liquid already and we have cash cash in bank and post office in the form of uh, deposits you know fd fixed deposit recurring deposit prepaid expenses prepaid expenses means you have paid for it and you are awaiting delivery for example you are ordering in flipkart amazon and all in which you are paying it and you expect deliveries right so it means you own it because you have paid for it then standing crop the crop which is standing thus current receipt then time deposits same thing like cash in bank post office shareholdings the farmer is owning some shares in some companies you can call that as current assets because it is easy for the farmer to convert those shares into money immediately if there is any urgency then inventory if the farmer is making inventory stock of grain feed other supplies then gold ornaments gold ornaments are current assets because it is easy now for us to convert gold ornaments into cash with ease right and current liability and then we'll see intimate we'll see assets first and then go to liabilities after current asset we can see intimate assets again we are classifying some items into intermediate assets on the basis of the liquidity right we have livestock we have machineries equipment particularly we have got drip irrigation equipment and then we have some securities which are not readily marketable you know they have some fixed time period you can you can convert them you can sell them only after 2 years or 3 years whatever right then long term assets these assets we cannot convert them into cash or it takes you know high amount of time for us long time long time for us to convert these assets into cash we have land we have farm buildings we have cattle shed and storage structures all these are long term assets and then like assets which we are classifying on the basis of liquidity that is the property of any asset to get converted into cash you write down the property of any asset to get converted into cash liquidity in liability we are classifying the items on the basis of the time period taken for example if the farmer is taking loan which he can repay within one year that is called as current liability if he is taking a time period of 1 to 3 years it is called as intermediate liability and if he is taking time period of more than 3 years to 25 years example housing loan which we are taking it is a case of long term liability so in current liability we have got operating expenses the expenses the farmer is you know paying every day to continue his agriculture operation like payment for labor you know payment for input supplies like fertilizers pesticides all those things or rental charges that he is paying for the machineries that are hired all are called operating expenses then the tax which a farmer is paying every year then the rent which the farmer is paying every year then the interest component of intermediate and long term liabilities you know the farmer has taken a loan of 15 lakh rupees for tractor right but every year he has to repay the interest of it right not the principal amount the interest of it so the interest component of intermediate and long term liabilities need to be accounted under current liabilities because they are paid every year then we have crop loan we have hand loan taken from uninstitutional sources crop loan taken from institutional sources all come under current liabilities if the farmer is able to repay within one year then liabilities which stand for one to three years time duration are called as intermediate liabilities example sale contracts with the farmer has made then outstanding intermediate loan taken if there is any outstanding loan that is apart from the interest paid every year which is accounted in current liability the outstanding amount of the intermediate loan should be considered in intermediate liability component then we have livestock loan we have poultry loan so all these will come under intermediate liability and then what we have we have long term liability that is longer duration more than 3 years up to 25 years even 30 years but generally as a thumb rule we what we have is 3 to 25 years uh, time duration of repayment period for the farmer 
is called as long term liability tractor loan orchard loan land development loan all the outstanding amount whatever we have should be accounted in the long term liability so if i give you the problem in practical examination or in theory examination right what you're supposed to do you should take a note of all these items then you have to identify those items and then you should categorize you know where you have to position the data because at the end of the day what you're going to do is you're going to present a tableau statement right so this is the tableau statement which you are going to present you know so this is the balance sheet statement a tableau statement where we have current assets included assets long term assets similarly what we have is current liability intermediate liability and long term liability once you made this tableau statement and then once you are once you have given all the items accordingly then what you are supposed to do you have to find the total value of the assets all the assets okay current intermediate long term similarly total value of all the liabilities then what you have to find you have to find net worth okay net worth owners claim or owners equity right nothing but total assets minus total liabilities that's it so this is the end of the balance sheet right now we know what is balance sheet we also know what are the components of balance sheet right and then we know how to present balance sheet okay if you have to present balance sheet watch it from on left hand side watch it from on right hand side you know and how to make that categorization what is the uh, basis for example in case of assets what we have we have liquidity right liquidity as the criterion for the classification of all the assets and for liability side what we have we have the criterion called time period right time period or repayment period for the firm right that is what the criterion is so on the basis of criterion you will be able to identify the items and then you have to make all the categorization once you have made it and once you have found the net worth this is the end of balance sheet but we need to do analysis you know analysis is very important in a balance sheet let us do analysis so using test ratios simple form of test ratios we are going to do analysis so we have three types of important ratios right we have liquidity ratio debt ratio solvency ratio so if you want to analyze balance sheet why it is important because you should be able to be in a position to understand whether the farmer is in a position to repay long term loan or not right that is the basis of balance sheet but whether this farmer's position is financially sound or not to understand all these things we have these three common ratios first liquidity ratio debt ratio solvency ratio right so what comes under liquidity ratio that we have to see you see now so in liquidity ratio what we have is we have current ratio we have intermediate ratio or working ratio and then we have asset test ratio or quick ratio so basically we have three different ratios to analyze balance sheet three major ratios and all these are sub constituents okay. this is the component this is sub this is sub component of it so in current ratios nothing but total value of current assets by total value of current liabilities we know what is the total value of current asset right we have done it so this is the total current asset you make the total of it that is one right so total value of all the current assets upon total value of all the current liabilities will give you current ratio naturally we know the ratio should be more than one if it is less than one it means what the farmer is not in a financially sound position if the current ratio is less than one it means what the current liability is more than current asset right if the farmer is not able to um, be in a position to be in a sound position to look after to look after the current activities right that is the current ratio being less than 1 then we can say that the farm the farmer cannot hold any long term commitment he won't be in a position to look after investments because if the farmer has to earn more money then he has to take more risk the farmer has to take more risk it means he, is, he should be in a position to invest more right but if the current ratio turns out to be less than 1 it means what the farmer is not able to manage his business uh, that is uh, the seasons business profitably then he won't be able to manage his business through investments 
because only when the current ratio is more than one, only when the current condition is good, the farmer can go for long term investments. Then comes what? Intermediate ratio or working ratio. And what is this? That is the sum of total current assets and total intermediate assets, then upon or divided by total current liability plus total intermediate liabilities. That is. So I have given you some figures for you to understand it. If this is the word, and you're getting 3.47. Again, what you have is it means what? Here the farmers is in a sound position, whether in the current year or an intermediate year, right? The farmers' financial position is good because the ratio is coming to be more than one. Right. So we have current ratio, we have intermediate ratio. Now coming to this part, asset test ratio or quick ratio. You know, asset test now, if you are taking a tough test, right? This is called asset test. Like, so here in Ramayana, when Shita Devi entered Agni Pariksha, they can call it as asset test. Something like this over here, we have asset test ratio or quick ratio. There is a small difference between current ratio and asset test ratio. Why? Because in current assets, we have all the physical assets as well as monetary assets, right? Physical assets as well as monetary assets. You see here, we have cash in hand, we have cash in bank post office, we have time deposits, we have shareholdings. So all these are already monetary, right? There is no need for us to convert them to cash, right? They are already monetary. So all these can be called as monetary assets. Apart from that, what we have is we have got standing prop, we have got gold ornaments, we have got inventory. So they are physical assets. So we have monetary assets and we have physical assets in current assets. Now we should be estimating whether the farmer is in a position to repay the current liability just by using the cash or monetary assets or not. Without selling any of his physical assets, without selling or without marketing any of his physical assets, whether the farmer is in a position to repay or to manage the current liability or not. For example, here, without selling the gold ornaments, without selling the standing crop, without selling or selling off the inventory, whether the farmer is in a position to manage current liability or not. So this is called as asset risk ratio. That is total current assets minus value of total physical assets. Total current assets minus TCA minus total value of physical assets. Because in current assets, we have got monetary assets as well as physical assets. So find the value of all the physical assets and then you have the value of current assets. So value of total current assets minus value of total current physical assets will give you the, the uh, numerator part. And then in denominator, what we have is total current liabilities. So here we see we have cash receipts, we have accounts receivables that is to be obtained from others. We have got marketable securities, bond shares, you know, and then we have got cash in hand, we have got time deposits, all these things. We're getting it. So in current ratio, we are taking the total current asset together, but here in asset test ratio or quick ratio, quick, how quick the farmer is to repay the total current liability. So we are taking only the cash assets or monetary assets, right? So this is about the liquid ratio where the value should be more than one. You see here, the value is less than one, 0.29. So what is what it means? The farmer is not in a position to manage the total current liability only with the cash assets that he has got. So if he has to manage the total current liability, then he has to sell off the physical items that he has got. Otherwise, he is not in a position to manage the total current liability. So it should be more than one, right? And then what we have in debt ratio. So first is liquid ratio. Then we have debt ratio. In debt ratio, what we have is we have got equity value ratio. And then we have got debt equity ratio, which is also called as leverage ratio. Leverage. How much the farmer can leverage. It means what? What is the uh, long standing commitment that can be expected from the farmer? We're getting it. For example, here you see we have total debts. We have owner's equity, right? Here total debts come to be 2.56 lakh 
and to owners equity that is net worth it is 7.19 lakh 0.36 so here the farmer is in a position to go for any long term commitment it means what if the farmer is interested in establishing a greenhouse greenhouse is not an you know annual commitment right that is this year the farmer is establishing and next year he can bring it down no it is a long term commitment the farmer has to invest some 5 to 7 years on it so if the debt equity ratio or leverage ratio how much the farmer is in a position to leverage his owner's equity if it is less than 1 then good if it is more than 1 it means what the farmer is not in a position to have any long term commitments pio since it is 0.36 it means what the long term commitment of the farmer is good then here equity value ratio is nothing but owner's equity by the value of assets again it is less than 1.74 it is less than 1 then we have current liabilities ratio which is nothing but current liability upon owner's equity that is with the network that is available to the farmer whether he is in a position to manage the current liability or not right so debt ratio should be less than 1 liquidity ratio should be more than 1 debt ratio should be less than one then last we have solvency ratio solvency what is solvency the ability or capacity of the farmer to repay long term loan is called as solvency in solvency what we have we have long term first uh, we have two ratios first is simply solvency ratio then we have ncr which is net capital ratio what is net capital ratio nothing but total assets upon total liabilities so the ratio should be more than one right then we have solvency ratio what we have total long term liability upon net worth and so this should be less than one right total long term liability upon net worth huh? this should be less than one that is whether the farmer is in a position to repay long term loan or not with his net worth right so if the farmer is able to repay long term loan it means automatically he is in a position to repay intermediate as well as short term loan right. now we have thumb rule for current ratio as i told you it is uh, less it should be more than one the indication is what indication is the farmer is in a position to meet immediate financial obligation then intermediate ratio again more than one time period is 2 to 5 years up to 5 years 2 to 5 years the farmer is in a position to meet any financial obligation then ncr net capital ratio it should be more than 1 solvency position of the farmer the farmer is completely solvent just like in chemistry labs and all now when we dissolve something if it gets completely solubilized in water it means a solvent like that the farmer is in a position to dissolve all the loans net capital ratio more than 1 uh, more than 5 years the farmer is in a position for more than 5 years the farmer is in a position to dissolve any type of loan right then what we have we have asset test ratio also called as also called as let us see okay this is see now current asset minus physical items upon total current liability more than one it means what the farmer is in a position to manage total current liability only with the help of the only with the help of the monetary or cash assets he need not sell off any physical items you see now adequacy of cash and income surplus to cover all current liabilities then what we have current liability ratio less than 1 because all these are nothing but your debt ratios so current liability ratio debt equity ratio equity value ratio all these are debt ratios debt means loan dbt it so this should be less than 1 so the farmer is able to meet any immediate financial obligation against net worth using this net worth or the balance remaining or equity remaining the farmer is in a position to meet any immediate financial obligation of 1 to 2 years that is called as current liability ratio debt equity ratio it means what the capacity of the farmer for long term commitment total debt upon owner's equity if it is less than 1 it means what since it is less than 1 the farmer can give any long term commitment he can aspire higher he can establish greenhouse he can take up orchard loan he can invest in soil breeding so all those long term commitments the farmer is in a position to deliver and what we have equity value ratio owners equity upon value of asset 
owner's equity net worth upon total value of the assets less than one it means what what is the level of productivity gained by the farmer in relation to asset whether the asset has led to productivity or not because whether the farmer is using all his assets effectively or not if the farmer is using the assets effectively then it must have given the farmer some kind of net worth that is productivity right so this is what we have seen let us revise now we know what is balance sheet it's a statement which comprises of three components first is assets and we know liabilities and then we have owner's claim or net worth right the representation of all the three components in the form of a statement is called as balance sheet what is the use of it financial solvency of a business we have three statements uh, in agriculture we have seen so far balance sheet or net worth statement cash flow statement and lastly we have profit or loss statement or income statement okay all the three statements are unique and they have got their own use and what is asset what is liability assets or those items which are owned and are capable of giving economic returns right liabilities are which are owned by others right then what is owner's claim or owner's equity nothing but assets and liabilities then how we can classify assets current assets intermediate and long term assets what is the basis of it liquidity what is liquidity liquidity is the capacity or ability of any asset capacity or property of any asset to get converted into cash more readily current asset somewhat readily intermediate takes long time or impossible fixed assets right and then uh, liability we are classifying liability on the basis of the length of repayment period if it is repayment is done within one year it is current liability the repayment taking one to three years it is called as intermediate liability and the repayment is taking more than three years up to 25 years we are classifying it as long term liability and long term liability what we have is we have mortgages we have pump set loans we have tractor loans orchard loans all those things right and then uh, once you know the examples and all now what can come then we have to prepare a financial statement in that statement what you have is you should have current assets intermediate assets and long term assets similarly we have current liabilities intermediate liabilities long term liabilities once you know once you have classified the next step is for you to find the net worth nothing but or uh, total assets minus total liability net worth is also called as owner's claim or owner's equity right now once this is over then you have to go for analysis the analysis of balance sheet can be done using test ratio right in test ratio we have got only three only three different test ratios liquidity ratio debt ratio solvency ratio what is liquidity ratio liquidity is what to understand whether the farmer is able to manage his current position that is it may be current year it may be the next coming year two years capably or not right so we have current ratio we have intermediate ratio we have asset test or working ratio this is these are these all the three ratios are called as liquidity ratio okay whether the farmer has got sufficient cash or whether he is in a position to convert assets into cash in the current time period or a time period of 1 to 3 years liquidity ratio then we have debt ratio all these ratios should be less than 1 in the case of liquidity ratio all these ratios should be more than 1 only if it is more than 1 it means what the farmer's current financial position up to 3 years is sound so debt ratio we have equity value ratio debt equity ratio current debt ratio debt equity ratio is also called as leverage ratio it means what how much the farmer can leverage his net worth if the debt equity ratio or leverage ratio comes to be less than 1 or close to 0 it means what the farmer is in a position to ask her for long term commitments he can leverage no like rubber band we are extending it we are pulling it right a rubber band you know to some extent we can pull it something like a rubber band the farmer can leverage he can think of some investments right then lastly we have solvency ratio where we have simple solvency ratio nothing but total long term liability by net worth whether the farmer is able to repay the long term debts or long term loans with his net worth or not right then net capital ratio ns here nothing but total assets upon total liabilities so we have tamrul which i have which i have told you right so with this we'll end this class hope you have understood what is balance sheet and why it is important for us to analyze balance sheet using the ratios
I want you to go through the go through all these ratios again. It's very simple: uh, liquid ratio, solvent ratio, and debt ratios. And also, you practice balance sheet in the uh, practical journal, which we have given to you. Right, I have given you a workload problem. Apart from that, I have also given you a question. Right, apart from example, I have given you a problem also. So you have to work it out in your practical journal, which we have given to you. We have given you all the exercises, and then we have given you a workbook, and then assignment. Right, in workbook again, I have given you a problem, same balance sheet. So that problem you have to solve. Right, if you if you can see that problem, right, it is in the form of a you know paragraph you know i have not made any classification at all i have given you all the items in a hypothetical scenario right it's a hypothetical scenario you have to identify each and every item right once you identified and then you have to categorize them into assets and liabilities and then you have to prepare a statement after preparing statement you have to conduct balance sheet analysis using test code so this is your assignment i hope you will be doing it and you'll be understanding this okay so thank you for your patience thank you for your time meet you soon bye take care stay safe take all the precautionary measures get rid of this chinese coronavirus thank you